This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Questions podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Questions Podcast. No pregame podcast this week because there's no game. And so you guys and gals are subscribers at GoPowerCat.com, the educated fans that you are, did such a fine job of asking questions this week that we made two questions podcasts. Instead of one giant podcast where someone would go, it was too long. I don't know why they sound like that. It's Are they kind of, old? That's kind of a weird voice to have. Uh, but when they type, it was too long. You can't hear the voice. You just anyhow. Tim Fitzgerald, Riley Gates, Zach Carlson. We did a podcast on Wednesday, and then we went and ate lunch at the High Low, and then we had small comas, and now we're back here Thursday morning. Uh, well, it's not Thursday morning for anyhow. It, it's Thursday morning for you. And it's another podcast. And it like the one on Wednesday, it's also sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Get into the fridge. Say hi to Kevin. Go get that funky little Oktoberfest beer that you've been craving for 11 months. Whatever it was. And just enjoy that beer. Soak it up. Well, not really drink it. It'd be weird to soak it up. That's kind of a waste of beer. Get into the fridge. It's at the corner of uh, Westport and Claflin. In Topeka. Oof. Oh, God, I almost had it. At some point, you're going to get accused of false advertising. I almost had it. It's in my head. If you don't know, it's a running joke. Can't get it right. Oh, boy, guys. But you can get it right. <laughs> I can. If I really applied myself, Mom, I could get it right. <laughs> She's listening. Hey, uh, do you think we've got people sorted out on how to listen to the podcast? No. No? Okay, so we no. cover it again? Yes, please. Uh, if you've got an Apple iPhone, go to Apple Podcasts, search PowerCat Podcast, click subscribe, boom, it's going to come to your phone. If you've got a Droid, go to uh, the App Store, download some app. Spotify. Well, most people, you know what? Most older people don't get Spotify there, Zacky Pants. I'm really surprised. What do you want them to download then? I, I'm really surprised at you because uh, you are an Apple guy and yet you Spotify for your yeah, podcast. That's weird. I mean, I use Google Maps. Yeah, he's. You use, the be- you use the best product. He's uppity about that stuff. Go search for Castbox. One word Castbox. Download that on your Droid. It's a nice, clean, simple app. And everything will download in a timely manner. Like uh, we posted the questions podcast on Wednesday afternoon, and within a half hour, I had a notice that there was a new podcast up. It was like magic, and I listened to it to make sure it didn't sound like doo doo caca. And if you go it to the not. if you go to the website to listen to the podcast, even better. We've got a fancy little tab at the top if you're on the computer. It says podcasts. It's right up by BB. R-E-C. And if you're not on a computer, you're just on your phone, just go to the PowerCat Podcast message board, and then you can find it that way. There's also a There's way also in a the app on the mobile version. There's three It's bars. all there. It's there. I promise you it's okay. Uh, and if you are a savvy listener and a big fan, give us five stars over there on Apple. If you're not a big fan, uh, yeah, whatever. We still love you. 
We do. We do. Uh, we're sponsored by Tanner's here in the first segment. Get into Tanner's. Are we going to eat there for lunch today since it's Thursday? Uh, but we're posting this in the morning, so we can't. We could. Are you going to be in the office for but lunch it, on Thursday today? I don't know. Maybe we will be. You tell me. <laughs> I'll be working on the uh, overtime. Uh, so, yes, I will be because I've gotten carried away with it. You've added sound into the non overtime one week after you said, I'm going to start taking less, or I'm going to start taking more sound out of the overtime. Then you just added more to other podcasts. I just added sound. I've added sound now into two separate podcasts. Hey, I'm addicted to sound. You're addicted to these podcasts. We appreciate your loyalty. Man, our, our downloads are just going through the roof. We set a very aggressive goal, I thought, for September that would, you know, greatly increase our downloads from. August, and we will, we're about to pass that, that goal. We're going to do 150% of our goal if we stay on track here. And I wouldn't say we set a small goal. No. It's like we aimed no. low. No, we did not. I swear we would make it, and then about one week into it, I go, oh, wait, that was too low. <laughs> but here we go. It's your questions from Wabash Station. Here's Zach. From Estonia Cat, my understanding from Fitz's emergency podcast is that Skylar Thompson dislocated a finger against Mississippi State. When did it happen? Is it on his throwing hand? And how long does the pain linger from that kind of injury? Well, it's not a dislocation. We it turned out, out not to be dislocation. Which is Good amazing. <laughs> if you looked at it, you'd have thought it was broken in half. <laughs> he was cramping, right? That's yeah. all it was. He was just cramping at a hand cramp, so his thumb was sticking out. In a really kind of weird manner, because we have it on video, but it was just a hand cramp. Just very strange. He was cramping in weird, weird ways. Uh, so he got, when he left the field in the second quarter, he went in to get an IV. Yes. And then he had problems in the third quarter because he was like overhydrated. I don't know what that, you know, what happened. He was dizzy. What did he say he was? He just wasn't feeling well. Oh, he well. didn't I feel mean, well. He was kind of sick to his stomach. I mean, I've never had an IV, but like, like to get rehydrated right away. But I can't imagine it's just like, boom, you're good, you know. Like, I imagine there's a little bit of like a well. Oh, I need to get going again here. Usually, an IV is over a prolonged period of time. They forced it into him. Right. Right. I mean, they're squeezing the bag. They're forcing that into him, and that will make you squeeze. So he'll be all right. It's it's fine. I don't know. Maybe. Eat a banana. I know where you're going, Zach. They were not playing slap the bag with the IV. No, I'm just thinking back in the day, Bill Walker and the Gatorade towel. Oh, yeah. He was overhydrated that day. Drink some water, eat a banana, whatever the healthy things are to do to avoid. No, that's. Can you eat bananas to avoid cramps? Is that what it is? Yeah, potassium. Yeah. Okay. Gator lights. What'd you say? Gator lights. Gator lights? Yeah. Did you not see the video from fall camp? They posted. They had a whole bunch of Gatorades with. I guess you I put that. you put ga- they're called Gator Lights. You put them in there. It's extra stuff for cramps. Guess I missed that. Yeah. Guess I missed it. Gator Lights. <laughs> From Queso Cat, which player is outperforming your expectations on offense and on defense? On offense, James Gilbert, because I thought it would be a tougher battle to be kind of the main workhorse there. I really thought Jordan Brown would emerge. And not that he hasn't been good, but James Gilbert's been really damn good. You know, that's what's kind of remarkable. I guess you'd have to say, for me, it's just the offensive line. I mean, it's not really one person. It's that unit because I kind of think that committee's working okay. I know Gilbert got most of the carries in Mississippi State. His numbers weren't great there. I mean, Jordan Brown averaged more per carry by far. but Right, but... Overall, James yeah. Gilbert has been a better running back. Yeah. On defense, it's A.J. Parker for me because I had a lot of concerns. But I didn't think he was very good, honestly. I mean, I thought he was fine. I didn't think he was good enough to be a dude, and he's been a dude this year. He's already got two picks, so that's awesome. Um, and he just seems to be making a lot of plays and, and playing with a lot of confidence. You know, I, another candidate's Jordan Mitty, uh-huh. but I wouldn't be shocked because I, I'm just going to say, like, I, I expected this. I knew he was a good player. I tried, you know, we tried to tell people that he was not just on the team because he had a connection into K State with his dad coaching and things like that. He's he's a good football player that 
just never had an opportunity at a good team. And, and once he got adjusted to this level of play, I, I had a feeling he would he would shine in this system. I knew the offensive line would be good, but my goodness. I mean, the things they're doing, they just dominated Mississippi State. That's a big defensive line, defensive front. That I mean, they were talking – you know, four-star guys, high three-star guys, maybe a five-star in there. I don't know. They're highly regarded. They're great athletes. And they kind of bullied them around for most of the day. And, you know, they've been – they've really hit the ground running with this offense because it's demanding different things of offensive linemen than they've been asked to do in the past, and and they're getting it done. So I'm going to go with offensive line and, and maybe do the same cowardly thing and just pick the unit of defensive line. They've been really solid. But can you use defensive line for like as a whole for surprising? Because we we had high expectations for this defensive line, you know. Yeah, but it's still the same unit. I guess I'm going off that Mississippi State game. It was the same unit that played Mississippi State last year and stunk. It's fair. I don't know, but yeah, AJ Parker's a good choice. From Wagcat, is something wrong with Zintner? He was only like three for three on kickoffs for touchbacks. Why isn't he kicking off again? They're going to try to redshirt him. Coach Kleiman said that on the radio show on Thursday. Um, lucked out and had free time to listen to the radio show for the first time in my life. <laughs> and I listened. And, yeah, they uh, Ty, Ty Zentner's got a redshirt year. And they feel that they have enough kicking ability in Blake Lynch and uh, Devin Ankle to handle the kickoff duties. So, Ty's played in one game. He's got three more to go before he burns a red shirt, and it sounds like they're going to try to keep his red shirt for this year. I'll be interested to see when they decide to play him. Honestly, he might be done. Well, I he mean, gets three more games. No, I know that, but I mean, I don't think there's ever going to be like, you know, maybe just a time where they're like, "Hey, Ty, you want to try a field goal going out there?" No, I'm thinking kickoffs because he was clearly better at kickoff. I mean, he was. I guess if they go up against a really, really good return person, they they might use him in that game, and because he'll just put it out of the end zone. Devin's pooch kicks have been designed. I've for the I think like ninety five percent of the time they were been designed. his kicks out of bounds designed because those were awful. Uh, yeah, I think he was trying to pin those a little bit in tight, but and he's got the leg to go out of the back. I think so. I don't know. I think Ty Zentner is probably the best kickoff kicker, but if you can manage it. Without burning his retro, you might as well keep it. That's just yeah. that's just the reality. You do that and play him three games. Fair. From GT Cat, when we hear special teams need some work, are we putting too much stock into muff punts? Yeah, it's fair. That's really fair because that's been so glaring. But kickoff return for a touchdown, two deflected punts, they've field been, goal made. They've been damn good on kickoff coverage. Great on kickoff coverage. But muff punts are like a cardinal sin. And Coach Kleiman knows it because he talked about his glorious career as a punt return ball catcher. He wasn't really a return man. He was out there to catch the ball and fair catch. He was the Mitch running of Northern Iowa football, if that dated joke catches up to anyone. Uh, yeah, that, young no. people don't get that. But that's what Mitch running did back in the day. He'd just go out there and make sure he caught the ball and way fair catch was a receiver so he gets it he gets what's going on but he also gets it's difficult to learn how to do it and we found out also on tuesday that our own michael goins was a pun returner if you've seen him uh as an athlete you would be shocked he was a football player are we sure he's telling the truth there michael's never lied in his life Hmm. okay okay except to the police a few times (laughs) <laughs> Dang. Wow. She's going to throw him under the bus like that? I'm sure he has. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's a great question, valid question. But what they're doing, muffing punts, is dramatically destructive to the opportunity to win football games. It's because you can kick a ball out of bounds on a kickoff, and it's fine. You just get a penalty. They get a ball up a little bit better. You can give up a little bit of a return on a punt, and it's like, all right, well, still, at the end of the day, they're only maybe 10 yards closer than they would have been. A punt literally rewards them for sucking on, or a muff punt literally rewards them for sucking on offense. <laughs> hey, we didn't get the first down. Now we're kicking you the ball again. We're essentially just seeing how far downfield we can get it and then take over again with a first down. Yep. It's very annoying. Yeah. So, but I mean, if you stop and look at the entirety of that, I mean, they were 
generally good in special teams, except those muff punts literally cost him 10 points. He just gave up 10 points off of that, let alone the momentum they would have had with not giving up the ball and regaining possession and maybe going down to score themselves. So uh, it's easy to say, yeah, we're reading too much into it, but it's also a problem that I said this after Bowling Green, you got to fix it. You got to fix it. I mean, it could cost you a game, and it nearly did in Starkville, and they're very fortunate they wiggled off the hook with that one. From Wildcat Wabash, in two weeks at Oklahoma State, who would you bet we see back to take punt returns, and who would you like to be back for punt returns? Taking punts. I think you're still going to see Philip Brooks. Philip Brooks. It would surprise me. If Malik would go back there at some point. I don't know. Yeah, could. I, the guy I don't understand why he's not the on the good hands guy up front is Landry Weber. <laughs> yeah, he's got some of the best hands on the team. You go watch him in practice; he's catching everything. I mean, if you need a guy that's going to make sure he catches it, it seems like he's your guy. All due respect to Seth Porter. Yeah, that was something. Yeah. I mean, I don't really see them trying to hit the reset button and change up a bunch of stuff like, oh, you know, what what, what could we really make different here? Maybe somebody's out there that we don't think we've really utilized yet. No, I think they trust them. I think that I think it's just mistakes that have happened right and they'll try to fix them now if it continues to be a problem yeah they'll probably change up they'll probably change their personnel but i don't think they're going to do anything drastic for this one i agree from ksu number one what does the team need to focus on during the bye week catching pots pass I, honestly the passing game i just need they just need to get better in everything you know Co- coach Kleiman said that there's like a it. <laughs> yeah there's a bunch of people out there think oh he's just permissive he just uh, he's not paying attention to details and you can't be more wrong he's just not doing it publicly i mean he he goes out there and hits on all the details that you need to hit on i mean he didn't have sloppy teams at north dakota state he's not trying to build sloppy teams at kansas state he just goes about it in a different way and yeah i mean they're going to get back to the basics he did mention we know we have a lot of things to correct. We have a lot of issues. We're not a great football team yet. He's not happy. He's not satisfied. Oh, we're three and oh. Hey. It's, it's that was a good impression. That that's not how it works. They're ready to go back to work, get busy. And I thought it was very interesting. They're not breaking the rhythm of practice. They are doing exactly what they would do for a game week. Now, we weren't sure what they'd do on Saturday. I think they just get the day off. So they would have that day off, if so. But they're doing a regular prep during the week, and then next week they'll turn their attention to Oklahoma State. For me, it is that, like I said, the passing. They, the receivers got to get better at, at getting separation, getting open. Um, I didn't. I wasn't all that impressed with the way that they did that um, in this game. Or this past game, you know, there were times Landry Weber found a way to get open. Dalton Schoen found a way to get open. Nick Lenners was open multiple times, dropped one, caught one, though. So it evens out. But Skyler, Skyler appears to be in a position where he's making plays, but he can't force the ball against better defenses like he's about to start seeing. Um, and they're going to – honestly, I think they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit at Oklahoma State. I think it's going to be a bit of a shootout and – um, you know, haven't obviously I haven't studied a, a whole lot yet on in terms of Oklahoma State run defense. Um, probably want to see that Texas game. Yeah, the defense for Oklahoma State isn't that great, but um, I I want to see the passing game get to a point where where we're not writing about like oh man, you know the running game struggled and the passing game was fine. You know, I want to be like hey, the running game might have struggled, but Skylar Thompson threw for two hundred and seventy five yards or something like that. Um, I just want to see it take that next step, and I just I, I think it's there, and I think they can get there. So I, I think that's something they should probably address in the next two weeks. From Hurt as Joe, according to the current ESPN FPI win percentage projections, K State should go eight and four with a realistic shot at ten and two. Do you think that is too simple of a look at this team, or does it win the games it should and steal two? Well, I mean, the ten and two would be, of course, Texas and Oklahoma. I look at the rest of the schedule. I mean, I don't see anyone I'm going to write off as a loss. I mean, the rest of the Big 12, Iowa State was picked for third. No. 
Uh, no, that game's in Manhattan. Even the road games, go to Oklahoma State, we're going to know real quick. Go to Tech. I don't see why they would be chosen to lose down there. They go to KU, yeah, you know. So are they going to lose at home to TCU or Baylor? or The 57.1% against Baylor, that's, that's really low, I think, considering the competition Baylor's played. They're, they don't play anybody. It's a ridiculous. It's a joke of a non-conference schedule. Yeah, I I can't. I don't have a grasp on Baylor. I don't have a grasp on TCU. I can't figure out Iowa State, Tech. I'm not sure Arizona's that good, and they look dreadful against Arizona. I'm just it. I guess my answer is who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe one of these teams will slip it into gear and they'll be really good, and and then it gets more difficult. Maybe K State will run into some injuries. If, if this K-State team, as is, can line up for the rest of the season, they're going to be in most games. But we know if they get a few more injuries, that's been the problem with the roster. They don't have the depth to sustain injuries. They knew they inherited some good players, but not enough. Some good players, but not enough. And there's no way to fix that. I mean, you can't you can't berth another linebacker if you get a couple injuries there. You you're going to have to roll with a freshman or Cody Fletcher or Nick Allen or someone that you just probably wouldn't want to put out there in that situation. So that's it. Last question of the first half from Wildcat Wabash. Removing the Texas and OU games, rank the remaining games on our schedule from most confident will win to least confident. Ooh. Read them down there, Mr. Gates. Got it open in front of you? Yeah. Um, what, you want me to read them in order or do you want me to read them like where I think? Read them in order for now. At Oklahoma State. Okay. Baylor, mm-hmm. TCU, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, at KU, at Texas, West Virginia, at Texas Tech, Iowa State. KU. And we're taking the OU and the Texas game out. Right. KU, West Virginia, the top two? Yeah. I'd say. Maybe reversed it based on this weekend? Yeah. Baylor. I still think KU's the number one. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say Baylor is my third most confident. Like prove prove me that you can beat somebody better than Rice before I'm going to buy into you. Texas Tech has to be right. Yeah, they put up 14 points. <laughs> How big of a culture shock is that? Not good. I mean, but that's what's interesting is his programs, well, Utah State, were putting up a lot of points. They weren't, and it's about to go worse because they just lost Bowman for about six weeks. Hmm. Um, I'd I'd put TCU next. Mm. I don't think Oklahoma State's that great, but I don't like going to T Boone, and I don't like facing yeah. that offense. It's I a might good put, offense. That might be one of the best offenses in the Big Twelve. Based on what I'm seeing, I might put Iowa State next. I was a good football team. Yeah, not Northern Iowa, is it? It's one of the better FCS. I'm just saying, I might put up as after. Two games in, they've got their third non-conference yeah. against someone awful. I can't remember who it is. Um, so we'll see if they struggle with that. Man. But Iowa State and TCU would be fairly comparable. They're both in Manhattan. So at Oklahoma State might be the is third. the least confident after Texas and OU. Shows how important the game is. Wow. That's wow. A, that. I did not think we were going to say that. Was that Wildcat Wabash? I, yeah. didn't, I did not. He think led we to enlightening us. I had not thought of Oklahoma State in terms of being the most challenging game left on the schedule outside of Oklahoma and Texas. But it seems to be just based on the fact it's there and other light games such as Iowa State and TCU are in Manhattan. Wow. 10 and 2 isn't really a stretch. No, I don't think it is. But also winning every game you should win is really difficult to do. Yeah. Unless you're dramatically better than everyone else. And even then, you see Oklahoma lose to someone or Texas lose to someone or Mississippi State lose to Kansas State. Because they were going to... That did happen. They were going to win the national title. Talk about unrealistic fans. (laughs) Hey, I mean, you've had good program at Mississippi State, but let's be honest, Dan Mullen's not going to the College Football Hall of Fame. I have never understood the obsession. That side note, the the obsession of Dan Mullen. Yeah, he's he's a solid coach. He did a good job. He'll be on that pedestal for them, though. Yeah. That's it for the first half of this week's GoPowerCat.com PowerCat Questions Podcast Part 2. 
Not part two. Part two. Because we did it on a Wednesday. This is the Thursday edition because there's no pregame podcast that, yep, okay, we'll be back. Stay locked in. The Power Cat Podcast will be right back. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter, and suddenly you realize you're out of drinks. You start to sweat. Your friends start to turn on you. You're forced to go on a last-second drink run and end up missing the game-winning touchdown while in line. (whistles) Terrifying, isn't it? Luckily, you can avoid the drama with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, then get them delivered right to your watch party. Compare prices across multiple stores in your area, find the best deals on game day drinks, and get back to armchair quarterbacking from, you guessed it, your armchair. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. My days working and taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Welcome back to the Power Camp Podcast, the second questions podcast of the week because we love you. We love you dearly. No, seriously, we've been doing podcasts every day and kind of got a rhythm going here. And we won't have a post-game podcast, obviously. Someone suggested we do a post-game podcast for Big 12 play. That would involve me staying up late and podcasting on a Saturday night, and I'm going to pass. Also, it would involve watching every game and, like, and not just casually watching it, like watching it, watching it, you know? Like, yeah, I'll put on the KU West Virginia game if I'm out of TV. How? It's on ESPN+. Plus. Oh, I bought it. I bought ESPN Plus because it's only fifty dollars for a year. <laughs> so you have to have cable for that? No. Fun fact: you can just put it on your credit card, and then you get an account. Do you have to have your it's own like, satellite? It's like signing up for a porn account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I. So, let's. We're sponsored by the fridge. I have got so many things. I'm sorry, I didn't know we were gonna plug a sponsor right after I dropped that line in there. <laughs> fridge wholesale liquor. It's like your your porn account. It'll nope. pleasure you. Mm, no, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that one got the look from Zach. Fridge wholesale liquor. It's not like a porn account. <laughs> there you go. Not at all. What a line. What a line. <laughs> but you still be happy. Hey, uh, and this segment sponsored by the High Low. We ate lunch there on Wednesday. Uh, I had multiple slices, but I did take home a good portion of my mac and cheese pizza slice for my wife. I would say you had two. Like, just I would specify that you had two slices. I would like to say that I took home a good portion of that. By that, I mean 30%. A good portion of that slice of pizza pie and then i had a barbecue chicken which i'd never had before and it was delicious because if you say multiple slices people start to think that you had like three but i had two slices and but you need to understand that two slices are like eating a raccoon and a baby elephant that was a horrible comparison because nobody wants to eat a, a baby elephant you're accurate in that Raccoons are probably delicious because they're adorable. We once ate possum. Did you really? Mm -hmm. How was it? Honestly, fine. Probably wasn't the safest thing in the world. Is this something you got on your trip to Mississippi at Cookout? (laughs) No. I'll take a burger, a corn dog, and some possum. No. One of those kids in my class trapped it, killed it, and we cooked it. Probably not the safest thing looking back, but here I am. I'm this, so glad I lived in a city. This explains a lot about Riley. He has no idea. He has small worms growing in his brain. Anyhow, I got all that out of the way for a good reason. Go, just go to the high low. You had a burger for the first time. I did. Well, 
a burger at the Hilo for the <laughs> first time. It was your first burger ever. <laughs> so, but it was they're yeah, they're good, aren't they? They're really good. Yeah, it was Royale with cheese. I love it. They named it that. Uh, okay, because I wanted to get to this this ESPN Plus thing. The basketball schedule came out. Yes, it did. And there's six games on ESPN Plus. Six Big 12 games. Six Big 12 games. That doesn't include the ones that are going to be in the non-con. Yeah, which they haven't announced, right? Correct. And because there's no more FSKC, any of that. Now, for you that get FSKC, you're probably like, well, drat. <laughs> but most people. Drat. <laughs> <laughs> most K-State fans that are outside the area couldn't get those games at all because they'd be blacked out for a reason that has never been properly explained to me. Like it was going to cut into viewership for some game in your area. Like you were going to watch that game. If yeah, Anyhow. But ESPN Plus, it won't be blacked out. Everyone in the nation will be able to watch it. So it's good for the greater fan base. But this has really caught me off guard. And I think it's caught the universities off guard. How ESPN is using Plus as an equal partner. They don't view it as a downgrade from cable Entities such as ESPN, well, it's lesser than ESPN, it's, and it's lesser than two. But I don't think they see it as any different than putting a game on ESPNU, which isn't received by everybody with cable, or ESPN News, which they have to do once in a while. I think they view ESPN Plus as an equal partner. Now, you may not, the universities may not, but I think they're just so determined to get this done and make this work and grow this that they're not shying away. They are forcing you. They are literally forcing you. If you want to watch Kansas State sports, you're going to have to go get ESPN+. Plus. Now they've done it for second time for football, and clearly there's going to be 10-plus K-State basketball games on ESPN+. Plus. And it'll be all right. It'll, get, it'll, be, it'll be good. I really do think that they have figured out the pro, you know, whatever. They wouldn't be doing it. They wouldn't be doing it if it had problems. Yeah. They would not be messing with this. If you have a solid stream, and I'm not talking about other things, if you have a solid internet connection that streams well at your home, you're going to be fine. I don't even have a great one right now because our houses in Manhattan have bad wiring. I mean, you just, nobody's going in there and redoing all of it. And I'm not having problems. I'm not saying that it takes you know, WTC gig powered mm, internet. So hey, uh, but Gary hey. at my house by the end of next week. Thanks. Bye. But, if, but if you have a decent internet provider with decent strength, you're going to get it. It's fine. I have a very common one in an apartment complex and I watched the KU, uh, was it coastal that they play? Yeah. yeah. I watched KU coastal the other day, a couple weeks back and it was, it was fine. just fine. So fine. as long as you have a competent internet service. And they're putting legitimate crews on there. I mean, I think Mike Golick Jr. does a good job. I love Mike Golick Jr. So I'm I'm not too – I get it. It's changed, and I, I'm, I'm doing some research here. But this really reminds me of when cable showed up. Now, for you old dogs out there, um, even a little bit older than me, you're going to remember that, that – Dad wasn't very happy that all of a sudden he had to pay for television because it was over the air. And he didn't quite grasp that, yeah, you're going to pay for it, but you're going to get more. And this is how it's going to be delivered in the future. Well, we're at another one of those moments. Eventually, everything's going to be streaming. Eventually. Cable companies are turning themselves into dinosaurs. And and a big reason has been their refusal to offer tiers of you know, you can pay for this and pay for this and pay for this and you get what you want. Instead, here's all these channels, 80% of which you don't want, but you're going to get them. And now along comes the Hulus, the PlayStation Views, YouTube TV, Sling. What else am I forgetting? There? Fubo. This is just the future. Folks, streaming is going to be good. You will never have to worry about your provider. You won't. Like I wanted to watch the ACC Network. UVerse doesn't have it. I mean, be thankful you have this streaming capability that your conference has gone with ESPN Plus instead of doing what the ACC's done and brought a dinosaur into the world. They brought the ACC network into the world right when everyone's going to be getting rid of these things. They can't get cable entities to sign up for these. Nobody's carrying it except a few, Cox being one of them. So it's a lot of people around here with Cox had it. 
but a lot of them aren't carrying it, and they don't want to carry it. They're not going to pass that on to their customers if they're outside of the ACC. No. You want to give it just free? Sure, we'll put it on there. But ESPN passing on their costs to cable companies and making a bunch of people who don't want ESPN to pay for it, those days are done. If you want ESPN+, Plus, you'll pay for it. If you don't, you won't. Simple. you got to make that negotiation with yourself. I'm telling you, I know a lot of you out there don't understand streaming, fear it, think it's a big change. You have to have a special TV. If you have a modern TV that has a USB port, you can go get a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick and you're streaming. And Internet. Get those two things. USB port, most TVs in the last, what do you think, Zach, 15 years? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that big I mean, really, TV. You just need the HDMI port. Port. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. HDMI port. But that's the last 15 years. You're fine. Folks, you're fine. If you have Amazon Prime, if you already do a bunch of shopping, just go get a Fire Stick. You've got an account. There's a bunch of television programming out there and access you're not even capitalizing on. And Amazon has some great TV shows. Great TV shows. Just go take advantage of that if you already have Prime. And then sign up for ESPN Plus. Do, do it right off the phone. Go to the ESPN app on your phone and then go to click on the little thing that says ESPN Plus and subscribe. Five bucks a month. I know you're being asked to subscribe to this, subscribe to Go Paracat, subscribe to that. This is the way it's working. It's going to be a la carte. You're going to get to choose everything. I am this close. This close to cutting my cable and getting everything and more that I want, everything I want, and even adding a few things I don't have access to right now and saving $100 a month. This isn't a bad thing. This is good for consumers. Now, Joe Blow and Silly Sally that don't like ESPN, don't want ESPN, don't have to pay for it. They can do whatever they need to do with their their selection of a service and not pay for ESPN. You might feel that way about news. Maybe you're sick of news. You can find a service that news has an add-on. Don't add it on, although most have it already because it's cheap. I mean, news outlets make their money off advertising still. So a lot of people are freaking about ESPN+. Plus. Take a breath. Go to the Google machine. Type in, how do I stream off of my, here's my brand of TV. <laughs> It's all out there. It's really not hard. And if you really have a lot of questions, call Rally Gates. Yeah. I swear if you put my number anywhere, I'm, I'm quitting. 785. <laughs> if you can guess the Beloit area code for phone numbers. 666. <laughs> nope. Nope. That's that. That's my rant on all of that. It's going to be okay. And once you start doing it, as long as you got a good connection, it's going to be okay. You're going to love it. And and the day will come when a big chunk of sporting events will be out there on the stream. And you can be sitting in your living room. You can be a K-State fan in Florida, and you can watch all Big 12 games. Not have any regional selections. Not have any blackouts. Not have any of that. It can all be right there. Eventually, that's going to come. And you can decide, I want to pay for this and this and this, and the rest I don't care about. Because every conference will have their own stream. Hopefully, a lot of them will be on ESPN Plus and will come with one subscription, which by then they'll jack up to $4,000 a month. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're always going to be balancing what it costs us to uh, what you'll pay. So it'll never get outrageous. Because right now with cable, you don't know what you're paying. You don't know what you're paying for ESPN. You don't know what you're paying for the local stations. You don't know what you're paying for... HGTV, another big one. You don't know what you're paying. You're just paying a huge stinking bill, and they're big. Let's get to your questions from Wabash Station. And to build off that, from Queso Cat, what are your thoughts on the Oklahoma State game being on ESPN Plus and not a cable outlet? And are we seeing an early look at what the future for college football TV is going to be? <laughs> well, Fitz just answered the latter half of that question. When, when you put it on... Compared to the rest of the Big 12 slate, I can understand the frustration. I would say that I would be a little frustrated, too, considering that Iowa State and Baylor gets the 230 slot that's either on ABC, ESPN, or ESPN2. 
Um, so yeah, I end up, that's I, the weirdest thing. I understand that side of it. So I think you got to start looking at it as a positive turn. You know, there's no way that ESPN isn't doing very well on this, and they want to continue. You know, we talked about this at length already. They want to continue to build their subscriptions. They want to continue to put big numbers up. Whether that means that they have a big meeting coming up that they have to prove, like, hey, look how many people we got signed up. Whatever. No matter how you want to spin this. ESPN is saying, we believe a lot of people will sign up for Kansas State and Oklahoma State on ESPN+. Plus, Or they are signed up. Exactly. So, yes, it's probably annoying. Yes, it, it kind of sucks that you got to do it on a stream. But I think you got to look at it as a K-State fan and be like, hey, that means it's a big game. And honestly, you could be the first domino to fall in the domino line of big games being on ESPN+. Plus. Okay, let me back up. I, that ESPN, ABC, ESPN two thing, they parse out who's on what region. Ah, so yeah. if you're in the Big Twelve, you you might have you'll be on ABC, there. right? But what you're also saying there is the ESPN, ABC entities offering three games simultaneously, all competing against each other. Right. K State's at six. Yeah. They moved them out of that. It's not like they put them up against that. The universities aren't very happy. They understand. I loved Coach Kleiman's you know, answer. It's like, I can't control this. But I'm not going to worry about it. I let other people worry about it like Kenny Lynn knew. It isn't ideal. They're trying to grow their subscription side. They want to show that it's a full entity, that it's not a lesser thing. And I love the suggestion of uh, the account, what, Exit303 on Twitter? Yeah. If the, if that's really it, put game day in Stillwater. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. If it is it an equal entity to everything else? Put game day in Stillwater and say this game is streaming on ESPN Plus. And if you want it, you need to stream because that's where it's going. Honestly, it's not a great slate of games. You might as well. I think that the, and, and as that's exactly where I was going with that. Um, Right, as you said, it's not a great a great thing. If you're talking game. Baylor, Iowa State on national TV, you know, going on ABC or ESPN, ESPN2, yeah, that kind of defines it. You've got Washington State and Utah, which should be – it's two top 20 teams. Yeah, but that's a non-factor for everyone east of the Rockies. And then you've got Virginia and Notre Dame. That's a big one. So the, And it's, you know, those are probably going to be before K-State and Oklahoma State. But if Oklahoma State were to upset Texas – then you're looking at two top 25 teams. They're both undefeated. And, yeah, you could come out and make a hell of a statement by saying, we're picking this game right now, and Lee Corso is putting on the Willie Wildcat head. And, oh, how can you watch that game tonight? By ESPN+. Plus. It's on the stream. That'd be the f- cool. The future is here. The future is here. It's all moving this way. Look at it this way. If you just go ahead and take the plunge, then you'll be ahead of everyone else because it's common. I mean, it's not it's not like this is going to go away. More and more games will be on the stream. More and more events will be on the stream. I watched the Chris Kleiman show the other day on the stream. It's right there. It's on ESPN+. Plus. That ridiculous KU series that, that uh, the guy to my right enjoys, it's on the stream. It's on I ESPN enjoyed Plus. it until the Coastal Carolina episode. I'd like to specify that I'm on Fitz's left. Okay, there we go. And... Honestly, there there'll be more and more stuff up there. Peyton's place is on there. Well, and even if uh, I do, I need to go. It's find fun. It. Um, if you're just a big fan, volleyball's on there. Soccer's on there. I mean, women's basketball will oh, be on yeah, there. Women's, probably women's basketball is going to be on there a lot. I would guess. It's. I mean, this isn't a thing that they're penalizing K-State football, saying we don't like you, we're putting you on here. This is where they're going to be parking a lot of sports now. I get why you're upset. I understand. And I see the insult, why you feel it, why you feel it's kind of sliding K-State while it's hiding. You know, but if you're a K-Stater, let them sneak in the back door. Let them not know anyone really know anything about K-State until they're 6-0 and playing Oklahoma. That's fine with me. I don't care. Just move on. From Lumbercat24, with the 3 0 start, is nine wins achievable? Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, achievable. it's achievable. Yeah. Likely. Yeah. But five wins is also achievable, you know? I mean, again, it, it goes back to what we said on the first podcast. Could they win eight to nine games? Absolutely. 
And they could still finish 6-6. Six and six. Yeah, I mean, achievable falls anywhere between 3 and 15 wins. I mean, there's not a game on this schedule outside of Oklahoma and maybe Texas to a little bit that I look at and say, K-State can't win that game. And if Texas was in Manhattan? I would say they could win that game. But at the same time, there's not a lot of games that I look at outside of KU and West Virginia and say, K-State will for sure win that game. So it's just... The, like we said before the year, it's a lot of toss-ups, and it's it's really tough to judge. But if they play as they've played, if they can find the happy medium on what they've played, you know, the dominating fashion, they beat those first two, and then the just good enough that they did against Mississippi State to overcome those errors, you're going to be winning about eight games, I think. Mm-hmm. Nine games in that area. Let's go to the Alamo Bowl. From K-State Legion, recruiting seems to have slowed quite a bit since the season started. Do you see that changing anytime soon? The season started. (laughs) They have other things to worry about. They're out this weekend. They're out going to be going to games. It's a non-contact period, so they're just observing. So, yeah, I mean, they're in a non-contact period. So, yeah, they're not talking to players. Not many players are committing in September. They're worrying about their seasons. They, they got they got things about their seasons. They got offers that they think could still come in. I mean, it not it's not just a Bill Snyder thing. I mean, like, September wasn't a, oh, hey, here come all the commitments, you know? What you'll see is when they get into big home games, they will have visitors. I mean, they'll, they'll be bringing guys in uh, to come see the campus, see the big game, more than the Snyder era did. The regime did. They didn't want the distraction. Now they're building out a staff. I mean, you you know that Taylor Bratz helped with that. They've got other people that help with that. Mike McCoy, the former running back, is involved in that. They're they're going to be slowly adding those pieces as revenue creeps in. Um, you know, honestly, be after they're done paying off what they had to pay off on the previous staff. So, yeah, it's it's coming. But they'll have more. There'll be more. Um, they're not going to bring in visitors for Nichols and, I mean, in big numbers for Nichols and Bowling Green. Looks like they're going to do it for Oklahoma, which I find a little when, surprising. When college game day comes for the Oklahoma game. They'll have visitors, yeah. <laughs> for the second time with K-State on college game day after Oklahoma State. It's an EMA college game day season. I like it. Um, from H.J. Nick, what heights do you think K-State recruiting can reach when recruits see how – uh, how we play on offense and defense, having fun, and the multiple sets with multiple personnel packages, almost guaranteeing early playing time for everyone. It's tough to judge in terms of the fun. Well, that first part of the question, how much fun they can have in the like, that's that's a very tough thing to put into words. But to get in on the field early, that's huge. That that is something that is going to come in handy, I believe, after the season's over. They will look at their freshman class, you know, whatever, 18, 19, whatever many kids are out there. They'll say, Jackson Ean and Josh Youngblood played more than four games and burned their red shirt. And then they'll say, guys like Joe Irvin played four games. And guess what? He's still going to be retro freshman next year, but he got on the field this year. You can do that too. That's a huge recruiting tool that I think a lot of teams are obviously going to use, but I think K-State gets to use it just as strongly as anybody. Um and then, yeah, you're going to get to look at running backs and go, hey, you might be in a multi-running back system, but look how successful you can be. Right. You might be a tight end and not want to play tight end. You know, you might want to play receiver, but look how good of a tight end you can be in our offense. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to take time. It's going to put take putting things on film and, and showing how, how they coach and, and everything, but it's going to be a huge tool in my opinion. I had a buddy share a story with me and, and uh, ran into, you know, someone who was a recent player an every down type player. And they thought it was the best thing in the world that they were running in subs. You know, how cool would it be to be fresh in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line and not worn down to the bone. So maybe the fact that they're shuffling players in and out isn't seen as a negative, even for guys that would be the starter. Oh, what do you mean? I'm the best running back, but I got to come out. No, I think players understand being fresh and, you know, there's a difference in their performance. I think it's going to really help. This is a fun brand of football. I've said it over and over, and a recruit can see it too. The guys are having fun. It's fun to watch. It's productive. Defense are not passive. They're attacking people. They're in a great conference. they got great fans. they got lots to sell here, and it's going to be intriguing over the next couple years to see where this goes. 
from KSU number one, is K-State a game day candidate if we are undefeated going into the OU game? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I forgot that question was in there. <laughs> you do the questions and you forgot. I mean, um, that's it's, it's funny because you would think, so if K-State's undefeated going into that one, they're probably going to be a top 15 team, maybe? Depends on what's that. Yeah. Oh, so where are you going? I don't know. If they're but, top 10, are you way up here? But, uh, and so you're thinking like, oh, hey, you know, maybe they could be game day. Well, folks, I don't mean to burst your bubble. Bring it on. What else is that weekend? Well, I'll start with the iffy ones. There's Wisconsin and Ohio State, which is currently two top 15 programs. There's Michigan and Notre Dame. Oh. And that's not even the biggest one. There's Texas and TCU, which if TCU were to, you know, they're not going to stay there if K-State was undefeated, obviously. There's Oregon and Washington State. But the granddaddy of them all is, I'm already calling it for week nine, will be college game day, Auburn at LSU. That is currently two top ten programs, both undefeated. And assuming there is no major upsets, both will continue to be undefeated. As okay. Auburn's toughest test is, you know, Florida's a good team, but they have a and Mississippi State, Florida, Arkansas, and LSU has Vandy, Utah State, Florida, Mississippi State. Yeah, I, I'm that confused. Will, will Auburn be coached by Gus Malzahn or Chris Kleiman at that point? <laughs> well, that will be after he has left, yes. Yes, yes. That goes back to Wednesday's podcast when Auburn people are already clamoring for Coach Kleiman. So, look, candidate, sure. If both teams are undefeated, sure. But I don't see it happening if those two SEC teams are undefeated. And keep in mind, Oklahoma, Texas is always one of their destinations. Typically one of their destinations. So probably not. From Hurt as Joe, last question on the podcast. What is the biggest surprise, bigger surprise, excuse me, the AP ranking K-State 26 or the coaches poll ranking them 25th? Can I say both? Because I didn't think they'd be ranked, so I want to say the coaches poll. But I didn't think they'd be getting enough votes to be 26th either. I thought they'd be in, like, the 29 to 32 line. I think a lot of people were like, okay, they blew out a couple. They looked really good against a couple opponents who should be. They look good. i got to see more. And then they see them win at Mississippi State. I'm in. And apparently there were a lot of people, coaches and media voters. I'm in. More coaches, I thought was interesting, than media voters. Well, I didn't think it would happen. Uh, I I think they deserve it. I think they're in the right place, right on in or out, right on that border. I was just shocked to see them go from no votes to ranked. Well, here's the beauty of it is someone could have a big win this weekend and knock them out of the coaches' poll during a off weekend. Which is such crap. I know. Like, I don't care how impressive anybody is. K-State should not fall out of the rankings this week. All perception. Well, they didn't do anything this week. They couldn't do anything this week. It's all perception. But they were. Well, if they lose to Oklahoma State, I'm sure they won't even be getting any votes because that's how knee jerk everybody is. <sighs> that's it for the second questions podcast of the week. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. It's been confusing. <laughs> We've had a lot of questions and a lot of podcasts, and we still have one more to go for you this week. Make sure you hang on for the Overtime Podcast coming up on Friday. I'm Fitz. It's Rowdy and Zach. We're your PowerCap Podcast crew, and we will talk to you later. You've been listening to the PowerCat Questions Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. PowerCat Podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.